So Hannah, are you ready? Grace, let's begin. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go, chapter four, lesson number six. Last lesson, we were looking at first order differential equations and we were getting the general solution, but now we are moving on to finding the particular solution of first order differential equations. Oh yeah. Now, if you remember, to find the general solution, we have to follow these steps. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our first order differential equation is of the form dy by dx plus something y equals something. Something in front of y is p of x. And on the right hand side, we've got q of x. So we first write it in that form and then identify p of x and q of x. We then get the integrating factor. We sub that into this equation here, then we integrate and we can get our equation down to y equals. So let's go with this example four. Examples one to three are in the first lesson. So find the particular solution of the differential equation x dy by dx plus 3y equals 5x squared, given that y equals 3 when x equals 1. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure the equation is of that form dy by dx plus, but here we've got an x in front of dy by dx. So what is the first thing that you would do, Cameron? Perfect, you would divide through by x. So if we divide the dy by dx by x, we're dividing the 3y also by x, and we're dividing the 5x squared by x as well. That way we just get dy by dx on its own. From there, we've got dy by dx, which is what we want. We then need something times y. Well, we've kind of got that. If you want, you could rewrite that though as three over x times y. And then it's dead easy to see what p of x into q of x would be. p of x, Ethan, is? Brilliant, that's just three over x. It's just really what is in front of y. And q of x, Abby? Perfect, that would be 5x. So we have p of x and q of x. So those are the first two steps. After that, we need the integrating factor. Now you can see the integrating factor is found by taking e to the power of the integral of p of x. So let's do that. Integrating factor, we've got i and then x in brackets. That would be e to the power of the integral of a p of x, which becomes, well, p of x is three over x, so it's the integral of three over x, just above e there. If you integrate three over x, sugra, what would you get? Perfect, you would get three ln x. Fantastic. Would you leave it as that, Michael? No, why not? Perfect, you can use your log rules. You can take that three up to the top, and it becomes a power. So you'd have e to the power of ln x cubed, just using your log rules. Michael, take it a bit further. What's the point in doing that? Perfect, e and ln will cancel out, leaving you with x cubed. So your integrating factor is just x cubed. Fantastic. The general solution then, we have the integrating factor times y equals the integral of the integrating factor times q of x. So the integrating factor is x cubed, so it becomes x cubed times y equals the integral of the integrating factor times q of x. So the integrating factor is still x cubed and q of x, we've got it up here, that's 5x. And we would be integrating that. First of all, simplify. So x cubed times 5x would give you 5x to the power of 4. And if you integrate that, add 1 to the power, divide by that. So you'd have 5 times 1 fifth of x to the power of 5. And obviously on the end you have plus c. Simplify that, you could just go straight to that step. It would give you x to the power of 5 plus c. Remember, you want to get down to y equals for your general solution, so you'd have to divide through by this x cubed. So we'd end up with y equals. If we divide by x cubed, well, we're dividing the x to the power of 5 by x cubed, leaving us with x squared. And because we're dividing this constant by something in terms of x, we would write down that it's c divided by x cubed, and that there is the general solution. Now, if you remember, this is the particular solution, and the only difference is we are given x and y. We are given that initial condition, and that lets us find out what the constant is. So, we were told that y equals 3 when x equals 1. So, how do we work out c? 
Brilliant, we just sub them in. So that there is the general solution. We replace y with 3 and we replace x with 1. The only unknown is going to be c. So we can find it. So that will give us 3 equals 1 squared plus c over 1 cubed. Work that out and that just becomes 1. We're dividing c by 1 so it's basically just 1 add c would equal 3 and that means c would equal 2. Woo! From there, if we know c is equal to 2, we can go back to the general solution. We can rewrite that, but we can replace c with 2. And that will give us the particular solution of y equals x squared plus 2 over x cubed. And that is your answer. Try these questions, see how you get on. It's in the Unit 1 booklet, page 94. Check your answers as you go. Make sure you are following these steps. Best of luck. Have fun. Enjoy. Bye. Woo. Yeah.